Welcome back to my home, Cooks and Chef. We're going to do a little something differently. I'm going to show you how to make this perfect barbecue brisket in the oven. See how the bark is? I'm going to show you how I got there. Let's get into it. All right, you guys, so we're gonna get into, I already trimmed it, so I trimmed my brisket, you know, so like I said, you didn't see in the title, this is gonna be an oven roasted uh, brisket. So I'm gonna try to get it as close as I can to a uh, smoked brisket, but you know, it's nothing like no wood fire, wood burning, or a pellet grill to get that, uh, you know, uh, uh, the smoke in it, you know, a smoke ring. So this is not gonna have a smoke ring, and there is ways to do a smoke ring. You can get the peak saw, or, you know, celery saw, whatever like that, or celery to do it. But uh, this one is gonna be a straight up roast similar to a brisket, but it's gonna be a brisket roast. For those out there, you know what I'm saying, if you were looking to do a roast for the family, this is a large piece of meat that you can get at a reasonable price, you know what I'm saying, without breaking the bank, you guys. So this one was around 40 bucks, it's about 16 pounds, and it'll feed a lot of people. So like I said, I already trimmed it up, you know, and so to get the most flavor out of it, because it's not, I'm not smoking it, I'm going to inject it. So um, if you don't know, you know, this is a good injector of brisket and fajita uh, 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 seasoning. You know, um, I, I use this a lot, I'm gonna use this also too as the binder. You know, I don't do much binders. This is as much as you're gonna see me do as far as binder wise. But, uh, oh, well, let me inject it first. That'll make more sense. And then uh, put the binder on because I'm gonna season it right after. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, uh, you know, eject with the grain, you know. Don't worry about splashing out. The reason why I'm doing the flat is because this would always most of the time get dry. So I'm injecting all around here, and stuff like that, so. Just, you know, inject all over. My method is if you, you know, inject it, you know, uh, cat a corner, I guess that's what they call it. You know, you can get it in between the fibers of the uh, meat. So I'm gonna get a little bit more of this uh, and inject the uh, flat, I mean the point next. Now the point is the most fattiest part. So that's gonna be the most juiciest. A lot of people do their burn ends from the point. And stuff like that. Mind you, the season I have, and that I'm gonna you know, show you in a minute, it's gonna flavor up everything. You know what I'm saying? So the reason, you know, the way I'm gonna do it, it's gonna have a perfect bark to it, even in the oven, you guys. And uh, I'm gonna show you the different methods of how to do it. So let me get over here and season it up. You know, and no, I, didn't, I only did it on one side. So yeah, just pour the binder on here. And this is really strong and powerful, so that's the reason why I like it. You know, it has the essence of what you're looking for in, you know, flavoring up your brisket. This bad boy is heavy. See, I trimmed it at the bottom. Now, I don't trim like, you know, like everybody. You know what I'm saying? I'm not in a competition. I'm not trying to be, you know what I'm saying? I'm actually, uh, but, you know, everybody has different ways. I don't really necessarily feel like all the competition ways of how they do their, you know, uh, meats are for an everyday home person that's cooking for their family. You know, so enough, enough, a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, feel differently about that. But the reason why you see them cook and do their trimmings or they uh, season a certain way is because they're in a competition. So they only have one bite to do. So they got to make that most flavorful, you know what I'm saying, for that uh, judge to taste and stuff like that. So that's why you see them do a lot of that. A lot of them don't explain it. Some do, you know what I'm saying, it's, you know, but that's the reason why, you know what I'm saying. You can do a barbecue brisket, you know, brisket, I mean, you know, a barbecue in the oven all day long. You know, if you don't, if you're living in an apartment or you have no way to access uh, getting a grill or you're scared to grill or something like that, you know, uh, so there is other methods, like I said, to barbecue. And it's not one, it, you know, there are so many ways. I remember I was against pellet smoking at one time and I swear by it because it helps me out with my business. It's way more faster and convenient, you know, saying for that. So that's the reason why I do like it. So, you know, right now I'm seasoning it over with this rub right here. Um, this is a fajita rub, really good. Um, you know, I give this, you know, I have to give it up to Amon and Claymo. You know, so he told me about the seasoning. And when I tried his brisket, you know, at the uh, grand opening for uh, TNT's barbecue, man, amazing, dude. Amazing, amazing. So some stuff you can take from competition guys, like they season it and stuff like that and do a wonderful job because, man, they know flavor, you know what I'm saying? Because, like they said, they have to pack in one punch a bomb seasoning flavor. So, you know, and when I tried this, you know, I mean, it literally floored me, you know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? Give it up to uh, uh, James, April, Amy, and Claymore. 
You know, so if you haven't checked him out, definitely get over there and check this visit man out. He's a competition guru. A lot of them out there. But uh, yep. So I just want to get an even coat. Don't don't think about it being a lot of uh, seasoning because it's really not. You know, uh, because this is a thick, large piece of meat. I just I did tell you it was about 16 pounds. So make sure you evenly distribute all your seasoning. I'm a season. I'm a uh, you know uh, black pepper guy. So. Put as much on as you like or not, it's up to you. But for me, I am. You know, and season all sides. You know, make sure you get them all over the place. So, all right, this is the bottom of it. I'll flip it over. I'll do this side the same exact way. But, yeah, you guys, this is a really, really good, you know, uh, 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 seasoning and a really good way to impress your family. Like I said, I'm all about flavor. You know, flavor's your friend, you guys. Just like I say, fat is your friend, flavor's your friend too as well. So this is a one way to do it in the oven and still, you know what I'm saying, impress the Texans, you know what I'm saying, and still have a nice, try to have a nice Texan, you know what I'm saying, because you can actually fool Texans, you know. <laughs> you know, I'm not trying to fool them, like I said, just trying to cook for them, you know, because in catering, you know what I'm saying, everything is fast and on the go, so. With my profession, I got to get it out into the customers in an orderly fashion because time is money. And if I got to sit here, you know, saying 20 hours, 12 hours, you know, I'm going to have to charge them. That's why you see a lot of barbecue places charge, you know, for their briskets. So y'all be wondering, like, man, why it cost so much? Hey, time is money. So, you know, that's all. Shout out to all my barbecue guys, you know what I'm saying, because I appreciate the craft. And not saying that I don't know how to do it. I can do it exactly the same exact way. But business-wise, you got to figure out a way around that. All right, guys. So let me uh, finish this up. Really, it's really done. Just pat it on. What you can do too is uh, one good one good thing about you know uh, doing it in the oven. You know, whoa. Speaking of that, um, when you actually you know, let me switch it up real quick. <sighs> All right, you guys. So look, this is how. You keep it out of the juices. You don't want to sit in the pan and have it stewing its own juices because it can get very, very salty and get brittle and everything like that. So this is one way that I do it so it can still have that kind of bark on it. So that's, that's the reason why I did that. Sorry, you guys. So put it on here. Line it up. Now, if you notice, a lot of times when you, if you're watching your favorite barbecue guy, they always prop it up. You know, sometimes it won't be, you know, close to that. This is a kind of a similar, just propping it up to keep it out of the juice and stuff like that. The juice is going to still drip down. But the cool thing about this is you can lift it out. You know what I'm saying? So that's one thing I did like about, you know, using this. It worked very well for me and stuff like that. So let me make sure. Let me season it up. I had a little couple of fingerprints, so make sure, you know. But, yep. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to put it in the oven for about... Uh, Say about four hours, and I'm gonna check on it. But I'm but I'm gonna lower the temperature down after two hours. I'm gonna put it on 350 degrees right now to get, you know, say a nice uh, uh, bark, you know, say on top of it. Yes, we're still trying to get a bark, you guys. And then uh, I'm gonna lower it down. But this one, you know, saying should take no more than four to eight hours, you know, so depending on, you know, uh, if I get an inner temperature. So I'm gonna get ready to probe it up, you know, um, with my uh, Thermal Pro. Can't go wrong with Thermal Pro, you guys. All right, I'm going to stick it in the most, right between the, the flat and the point. Make sure you don't stick it all the way through. So I stick it in the middle. And I'm looking for inner temperature for around 195. So right now, I'm just going to wait till it get up to about, you know, before I lower the temperature down, I think I'm going to wait let it get to about a good 100. And then I'm going to lower the temperature. So I know that sounds a little different, but also, too, it depends on the bark. If it's, if it's set, the bark sets well, you know what I'm saying, I'm going to lower it uh, uh, sooner. All right, so let me get right, so we out. back. You know, uh, after about a good uh, five hours of it being in the oven on, you know, about 300 degrees, I left it uh, uncovered. It uh, created a good bark and everything like that. So what I did was I actually drained, you know, the uh, liquid that was in here, and I'm about to put it on top. So I was coming, coming behind it like every hour, every two hours, spraying it with some, you know, a uh, uh, little uh, duck fat. So right now, you know, uh, I'm about to pour this. This is what all came off of it, so I'm going to just pour it on top of it. We're gonna get ready to cover it up. This is all the little fat that came off, you know. With this bad boy, fat is your friend. And uh, we're gonna 
I'm going to heist up the uh, temperature to probably about uh, 400 degrees, cover it up well. I still got my thermometer in there. The inner temperature right now is 165 degrees, which is perfect right now. So that, re you know, put all that, you see how I rehydrated and everything like that. So all we got to do is just cover it up. I left the thermometer in there. I'm going to cover it up with the thermometer. I'm going to put it right back in the oven and finish it off. I'm going to let it get to about uh, 200 degrees. I'm not going to uh, let it go over uh, uh, to about 205. I'm going to just do 200 and leave it as that. But um, all right, you guys, I'll show you when I, uh, it's fully done. And I'll take it out and slice up a piece for you guys. All right, you guys. So I'm going to show you, you know what I'm saying, how you can do uh, barbecue brisket in the oven. You know what I'm saying? And show you how wonderful it is. I just finished it up, took it out the oven. You see the bark on it, you guys. You know what I'm saying? It's dark. You know what I'm saying? It got a nice coating and everything like that. And the method I did was put it on a roasting rack out of the water, you guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice it up and show you inside, you know what I'm saying, what it looks like, you guys. Now, it took about a good six hours to do in the oven. Um, and I'll have in the description down below all the details as far as how I got came to this. And if you guys wonder about a smoke ring, this would not have a smoke ring. You guys, even though it did look like one, <laughs> you can, it's a way to do it, but I don't care about the smoke ring, but I do have smoke flavor on, you know, everything that I injected in here. So you guys, let me slice it up. You know, to show you how tender this bad boy is. Now, I did let it rest and stuff like that. And it's not a bend test because it's, it's still cold. You know what I'm saying? I'm definitely warming up, but see what I mean, you guys? It looks really good. You know, the fat is uh, done. I did trim it up very well. So, all right, uh, you know, but this... You know, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's a way to do a barbecue brisket in the oven. You know what I'm saying? Have the same methods, tweak it a little bit, and knock it out without having to sweat 24 hours, you know, 12 hours. Like I said, I give it up to all those that can do that, but this is for those. This recipe is for those that would like to make a brisket, you know, in the oven. You know what I'm saying? Simple and easy, you know, that can't you know, or don't know how to barbecue in that way. So hope you guys enjoyed it. If you're new to my channel, you know, so don't forget to subscribe. If you're not new, welcome back, you guys. And I hope you guys like this. And you guys, I will see you guys in the next one.